And there it is in the, in the New Living Translation. This is the message that I proclaim that the day is coming when God, through Christ Jesus, will judge everyone's secret life. So God, through Christ Jesus, is going to judge everyone's secret life. Has the heathen who has not heard the name of Jesus been taken to the cross yes. with Jesus? Yes. Did God make provision for that person yes. as well? Do you see that this is different than being a Calvinist or being what I thought what I called Armenianism? It's different. You're not... You're not the initiator like Armenianism would in indicate. You're not the uh, you're not just left out because you don't know whether you're part of the elect or not, like Calvinism would indicate. But this thing is something God has done that is so complete that none of us should be under condemnation, should we? Amen. Hallelujah! There's nobody that God can't save because God's already done everything necessary for the salvation of every human being that's ever lived on the planet. Now, what about this judging everyone's secret life? Jesus said that when we get converted, he writes his law in our hearts and that we will want to do what he wants us to do. Amen? And then the final victory, one day we won't have to wrestle this flesh. Amen? Because one day he's going to give us a brand new body. And it's not only a brand new body, it's this character that we've been talking to him with is going to have the, uh, the, the you know, Jesus overcame. We're supposed to be overcomers. And if you're in Revelation, it says, if you overcome as I overcame, you'll be seated with my Father. And so there is victory in this life. Amen? Amen. God has given everything. We've been studying about the Holy Spirit. It's through the Holy Spirit that he gives you all this, this help that we need every day to... Realize, like, hey, I'm in a sinful nature body, and if I'm going to overcome like Jesus overcame, I have to be crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ lives within me. And the life that I live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Amen? Amen. So, final victory comes for since we believe that Jesus died and was raised to life again, we also believe that when Jesus returns, God will bring back with him the believers who have died. He'll bring them back to life. For since we believe that Jesus died, is that the same one? Okay, next one. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 14 through 17. We tell you this directly from the Lord. You know there's times when Paul said, I say this, but not in the Lord, but I believe that I'm, I'm being led. This Paul says is directly from the Lord. And he says, we who are still living when the Lord returns will not meet him ahead of those who have died. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a commanding shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet call, call of God. First, the believers who have died will rise from their where? Grace. From their graves. Then together with them, we who are still alive and remain on the earth will be caught up in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And then we will be with the Lord. How long? Forever. Everybody say forever. 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 Wake yourselves up and say it one more time. Let's get a little Pentecostal here. Say forever. Forever. Amen. Now this I say, brethren, here's our final victory, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does corrupt, corruption inherit incorruption. Corruption, you know, worms that are going to eat your body up. But even worse than that, this nature that we inherited from Adam's fall, that constantly wars against us. Behold, I tell you a mystery, we shall not all sleep. But we all shall be changed. These are the folks that are alive in the last days before Jesus comes back. Do we want to be alive? Do we want to be alive when Jesus comes back? Yes. We shall not all sleep. Not everybody's going to die before Jesus comes back who's a Christian. But there will be some of us who are alive. And we've learned this science of salvation to overcome like Jesus overcame. <coughs> to deny our evil, sinful nature. And to let the Spirit of God live in us in a moment 
in a twinkling of the eye at the last trumpet. I love that part. Do you realize that if the Lord would take me in death and I closed my eyes in death, what would be the next thing I'd see when he, when he came? Jesus. Jesus coming in the cause of glory. Isn't that awesome? A moment in the twinkling of an eye when, like Martha said, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised incorruptible. Everybody say, whoop, whoop. <laughs> Are you happy? For this corruption must put on what? Incorruption in this mortal put on immortality. So when this corruption is put on incorruption and this mortal has put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. Victory, victory in Jesus. So death, where is your sting? Or ladies, where is your victory? The sting of death is sin and the strength of sin is the law. But everybody read this together with me, would you? But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. And our Lord is coming in the heavens, and we're looking forward to seeing Him one day soon. Amen. We are going to sing a song, and then Pastor John is going to have our uh, benediction. I'd like to invite you all to stand and sing. What number is it? 570. And this is called, Not I, But Christ. It's a beautiful song. It's a beautiful theme. Because if we are in Christ, hallelujah, we can have this victory.
Father, bless us. Bring us back if it's your will next week. For this we ask and pray in Jesus' name.